Hey guys, Ray from LoveYRV.com. So I've been doing some uh, reorganization of my boondocking power system here, kind of cleaning it up and uh, redoing some of the solar panel arrangement uh, now that I have that new Lion Energy portable power station to integrate into it. But uh, more on that later in a later video. Today what I'm going to do is pull off this inverter. Now this is a motor master inverter, a pure sine wave 1000 watt inverter that I got from Canadian Tire over 10 years ago. And I've just been amazed with this thing. Um, I basically bought it when we were going on a one year trip. That's the start of our full timing adventures. I, we only went for one year, but we're still going 10 years later. But I got it because I wanted something to build a, for Anne to be able to use her iMac computer when we were off grid. So 1000 watts was a good choice. Um, you know, you only spend so much that you can afford in a 2000 watt, you know, I could run the microwave and stuff. But back then, the things were pretty pricey. But this one was actually at Canadian Tire back then for about 300 bucks, but it was on a special 50% off sale. They sometimes have that at Canadian Tire. A Canadian Tire for Americans, um, wondering what it is. It's sort of like a combination between a hardware store and an automotive store and even has some kitchen stuff so it's kind of a, a, a kind of a unique kind of general store they have in Canada but they they do sell a lot of automotive products and Motor Master is one of their brands for for different things and uh, I'm not sure what would be comparable in the US. I think the N Power inverters from Northern Tool were exactly the same at the time. Anyway, I actually noticed they still sell sell this thing. I think it's actually on sale again for $189. So sometimes it comes on for a pretty good price. But, you know, 10 years and, and Ann uses it for iMac. And I even use it when we're plugged into the campground. Just in case the campground power goes out, this thing will stay on. And she doesn't lose any data or something in case she's processing a photo for an hour, two hours. She doesn't want to lose any data. So it's kind of like a, a UPS for her as well. So this thing has pretty well been on 24-7 for most of the 10 years that we've been full-time still working. But I thought before we get out boondocking again, I was going to take this off the wall and then pull it all apart. Check the fans, might have to clean the fans on it and look for any maybe cracked solder joints or anything I may have to redo. Okay, here we go. Motormaster Eliminator 1000 Watt Mobile Digital Power Inverter. And this is a pure sine wave inverter, so they're basically a little bit better for uh, sensitive electronics and, and power supplies that have switchers in them so they don't run hot. So I wanted that for the, the iMac computer for sure. You can see on this side we got a fan, an output fan, a couple connections. So I just ran basically two extension cords from this and then mounted two outlets in the rig, one in our bedroom and then there's one in the main room next to our computer. I didn't wire it actually into the, the RV circuits or anything like that. And then this thing reads out the display of uh, voltage and wattage, power button. There's a USB and then there's also a remote control telephone jack so I have a remote mounted in by where the outlet is so I can turn it on and off. On the other side a couple of big lugs for connecting the, the input from the battery and then there's the input fan so it has two fans on it. Then there's a ground, a case ground that you mount to the, you run it down to the, the frame of the RV and that just kind of helps keep the case uh, grounded. I don't think you really need it the way I hook it up because I'm hooking up a floating ground. People often ask about that ground there. And I think that's mainly if you hook it up um, so you can ground the case in case you have the output wired in where the, the, um, the frame can become live here and uh, you end up touching it and then touching the frame of the RV you can get shocked. It's only on, in the case that something goes wrong in here and you end up getting a hot a hot metal case on it which is very unlikely to happen so they, they still have this safety lug so you can ground it so if, if this case were to, were to ever get hot it would instantly blow the fuse because it's going and being grounded to the frame. Anyway I'm going to take this apart we're going to see what kind of shape the electronics is and see how dirty those fans are. It's mainly why I want to pull it apart if those 
fans are starting to get clogged up and dirty, it's going to have a problem with cooling then. with how clean everything is inside after 10 years we spend a lot of time in the southwest where it gets pretty dusty winds kick up you get a lot of dust blowing around so I guess somehow the inside compartment there kind of gets a negative pressure or something you don't get much dust inside here's this soldering on the back everything looks fine no signs of overheating on the board or anything like that I think Probably too because I barely ever run this at a, at a higher wattage like I say I got this to run and iMac and we also charge camera batteries and computers and things off it So it really only runs at around a hundred watts constantly <clears throat> Just flip it around look on the other side There we go everything looks good there all the capacitors look good. I don't see any with puff tops or anything like they're failing. This is interesting here. You can see they have a row of 25 amp fuses soldered to the board. So it's all in parallel to make a 100 amp fuse. And I saw on the back here that this thing has a max DC input of 90 amps. So I was always under the impression, because I had read some of the specs, I guess I read the specs on a newer model that has a 2000 watt surge capacity, but I guess this one doesn't have that. It says 900 continuous, 1000 for 5 minutes, but no mention of any surge capacity. And of course, with that fusing arrangement, I doubt it does have a surge capacitor capacity or it would blow them. So basically this model maxes out at 90 amps also notice the ground this is that ground I was talking about the case ground and it goes in and it actually is the same ground point as the battery so it's kind of in my situation redundant because my battery bank the negative is actually grounded to the frame of the RV it uses the RV as a ground frame return so there's really no <clears throat> point to hook this up at all. And I guess it's meant if you're using a battery that's that's isolated from the frame of the RV. Let's see, the ground also goes over to the other side and is part of the ground of the output, the AC output there. Interesting. You can see the, the fans really have hardly any dust. This is the inside of the fan. One of the fans, barely any dust. Barely any dust there. I'm going to just uh, spray them out with some uh, compressed air. It's about all I need to do for that. So I'm happy. Everything looks good in there. Probably going to last another 10 years. Okay, managed to get it all back together without any leftover screws. I had to take the label off. There was actually one hidden screw that I couldn't find. So now we have a no-name brand back up so this is how I hook it up I have this orange wire which is just a really an extension cable and that goes it weaves through my basement storage and up in to my bathroom bedroom area and I have an outlet there to plug into and then this other one was my original one it uh, goes actually I use this armor cable with the waterproof covering because it actually goes down through the underbelly where it's kind of exposed maybe to moisture and stuff so I used a heavy duty cable then it pops up near our TV and Ann's computer let's plug it in there see she's turned on there working again so what I've done um, I do have that new Lion Energy Safari ME box that I'm going to utilize its uh, inverter to run our, all our plugs in our RV. But I'm going to use this actually as a method of charging it up. If it gets run down, I still have my battery bank here that has three uh, Lion Energy UT1300 batteries in it. So it's a kind of a way I can transfer energy from this battery bank 
into the other battery bank utilizing this inverter. And I'll probably still keep Ann's computer on this all the time too. Give you a look at where I've put that Safari ME. So I'm going to keep it in my side storage compartment here out of the weather and behind it is its expansion box. So it sits in there and then what I'll do is when we get to a, a boondocking site I'll plug in my main cord, bring it up through here and I'll be able to plug the 30 amp right into that output there to power my RV. And then what I've done is I've taken a cord from from the other inverter and I've brought it into here so I'll be able to plug in when I want to charge this box off, off my other battery bank just like so and you can see this is actually all charged up but you saw it turn on and start charging I think that'll work out good if I need to uh, charge up this utilizing my other, my other batteries there which they have about a thousand watts of solar charging them and I can also charge through the generator both boxes so I think it'll work out good anyway I'm going to take it out in uh, oh it's getting down less than two weeks now we're going to head out and start doing some some boondocking for a month or so so I'll be able to really test this and test out that system so I'll come back with a video and show you how I've uh, set up the latest incarnation of my boondocking system Till next time, Ray from loveyourv.com. Cheers, everyone.